In this video, we're going to talk about a technique called reducing a list, where we take a list and we apply an operation repeatedly to the elements of that list. And that's actually a much more powerful idea than you may think at first. So we've seen list procedures in the past that operate on each element, but we can generalize those. So for example, here's our multiply all procedure, and it has a structure that is common among a lot of the other list procedures we've written. For example, it has a base case, in this case one, and the recursive case applies an operator to the car of the list and the result of applying the method recursively to the coder of the list. And then here we put everything back together. Now let's see what happens if we change up some of these things. If we change the base case to zero and the operator to plus, and again, we're still going to add the car of the list to a recursive call to the coder of the list, you'll notice we have the same structure we had before. But instead of multiplying, we're actually adding everything in the list together. So again, the same exact structure, only the name of the procedure changed, and then we changed the base case result and the operator we applied in the recursive case. So let's take a look at some code examples and see what we can do with this idea. So we have a scheme program that for now just has our multiply all, and let's go ahead and run that and see that it returns 24 when we multiply that list, which is what we would expect. Now let's write a reduce function. Keep in mind, we talked before about the things that change among the different procedures we've written that work on lists. So we'll call our function red and it'll be a Lambda that takes three parameters, an operator, a base case, and a list, because that list is going to be what we actually work on here. And then we're going to have the structure that we've seen before, except now, our base case, we're not going to say anything specific. We're going to use whatever the user passed in. Think back here where we have a zero for the base case. And of course, we also are passing in an operator. So we won't be specific about our operator. We'll use that parameter as the operator. Again, remember, Scheme lets us use functions as parameters. So I'm going to apply the operator to the car of the list. And then I need to make a recursive call on the cutter. So I need to do red. I'll pass the same operator in base case and then the coder of the list. So there's my function. So let's start off and see the examples we saw previously. Let's apply the addition and multiplication operators to a list. So we'll say red, then the operator, the base case, and the list. So red, addition, base case is zero. My list is one, two, three, four. Reduce, multiplication, base case is one, one, two, three, four. So let's run this and you can see that we get the results we would expect. So now let's try something different. Suppose we want to, instead of reducing the list to one value, what if we want to update everything from the list? Now think about this carefully because we call this reduce and we're not going to reduce the list. The list will be the same size it was before. So let's suppose we want to do something like, let's map the square function to each member of the list. Okay, so we're going to reduce and we know what our operator should be. Our operator should be a Lambda function. And we're going to multiply x times x. However, if I just do this, and then I guess my base case would be an empty list here. Since if I'm returning a list, that's typically going to be my base case. And I'll pass it 1, 2, 3, 4. But you'll notice when I run this, I get an error. Expected number of arguments does not match the given number. Expected 1 given 2. So notice here, when we apply the operator, and then the two operands are the car of the list and the recursive call on the cutter. So this function only takes one parameter, but this function takes two, and it's the car of the list and then the result of the recursive call. When we're creating a list, what is that operator? Well, it's the cons operator, right? So we want to have a cons in here, but if I just put cons, that just gives me the list back. And if you think about it, that makes sense because it's the base case, and then I cons the car back with the recursive call. So that's maybe a little better, but not quite there. But ultimately, what we're going to want to do is remember, we're going to take the car and the cutter, and we're going to square the car. So we're going to multiply it by itself. And we're actually going to cons that with the recursive call on the cutter. And I guess we should call that RCD, recursive cutter call. Let's make sure my parentheses are lined up here. So this is a weird function, but if you think about it, if you cons the square with some result, that's what you do here to create a whole list. So let's run this and see what happens. And you can see it squares each element in the list. 
And actually, let's define a, a function called square so that we can be a little more explicit here. So now we've seen how to apply an operator to each element in the list to return a single value to do the same thing, but returning an operator applied to each element of the list. And now let's try to filter things out of the list. So suppose we have a predicate called odd that returns true if an element is odd or not. So here, notice I don't need an if statement because this returns a Boolean. This returns true if the remainder of this is one and it returns false if they're not. So I don't need to do if this is true, return true, else returns false. I can just return the result of, of that comparison. So now let's do a reduce that, that returns only the odd elements. So I'm going to reduce. And my lambda is not going to be odd. I'm going to take two values. And then I'm going to say in an if statement, if x is odd, then I'm going to keep it. Otherwise, I'm going to throw it away and just return with the result of the recursive call. And my base case is the empty list. And I return 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's see if this works. Whoops, that should be CA up there. I should have tested that before we moved on. So there we go. Now we've filtered for odd. So we've seen how to work with this. But of course, again, doing these things with lambdas each time isn't necessarily clear. What we really want to do is use reduce to define other procedures. So let's define our sum all and multi all procedures using reduce. So what we're going to do is we're going to reduce with addition, a base case of zero, whatever's in the list. For multi all, something similar, except a different operator, a different base case. And we have some test code. So let's test that. And it runs exactly the way we would expect. So what about if we want to double each element in the list? Well, first, we're going to define a function. And then we're going to reduce. And we'll do a lambda x, y. There's two parameters because we're going to double everything in the list. And then we're going to cons two times the car, which is x, with y. Our base case is the empty list. And our parameter is the list that we passed into our function. So we'll test it. And we have an unbound identifier because we need a parentheses there, which means we're one short here. Actually, it's there. So, OK. Now we'll test this. And you can see we double each element of a list. So it really is pretty unbelievable some of the things you can do with that reduce function. In fact, let's see a few more examples. In fact, I would recommend pausing the video and trying these two things out. Think about how you would use reduce to get the length of a list and then to reverse the list. So these are pretty tricky, but it, it would be worth spending some time pausing the video, giving these a try before we move on, before you see it. Because the more you think about it, the better you understand when you see it. So pause the video and we'll come back to this. Okay, so hopefully you gave it a try by now. So we're going to reduce lambda x, y. Now, you may think, why do we have two parameters there? Because we're not returning a list. We're bringing them down to one value. But watch what we're going to do here. We're going to add 1 to y. Wait, what? Well, y is going to be the recursive call, so it's the length of the cutter. Well, the length of the list is 1 plus the length of the cutter. So we actually don't care what x is here. We could actually even make this a what's called an anonymous variable, where we just put an underscore. But for now, I don't want to confuse you with that. And we'll just leave it as an X that we'll just ignore that parameter. It's a parameter that's there, but whatever it is, we don't care what it is because it doesn't matter what the car is. The car is one thing added to the list. My base case, the empty list, we have a size of zero and let's pass in our list. And that's for the length of a list. And you can see the length of the list is six. Now to reverse a list, again, we're going to have two parameters. And if you'll remember when we reversed the list, the key was you appended y to a list with the car in it. Again, our base case is the empty list, and we'll do characters this time. And you can see we reversed the list. So it really is amazing. We take this, granted somewhat complicated function, but really once you grasp what this is doing, it really is amazing how powerful it actually is. Almost all of the list procedures we did could be performed just using a reduce.